Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. My next two guests are both working actors, businessmen, and real life husbands who are running one of the nation's premier surrogacy companies called Elevate Egg Donors and Surrogates. To say that these two gentlemen are multi talented would be an understatement to say the least. Taylor Fry is best known for his work as Topher in the teen comedy film GBF and to Broadway audiences in Hairspray, Finian's Rainbow, South Pacific, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, and The View Upstairs, where he starred to critical acclaim as Patrick. He also starred in the feature film Summertime and Stephen King's It Chapter Two. Taylor is the founder and CEO of Elevate. Kyle Dean Massey is best known for his work on Broadway in Pippin, Next to Normal, Wicked, and Xanadu. In addition to his stage work, Kyle Dean has been seen on the screen in Nashville, The Good Wife, Inside Amy Schumer, High Maintenance, Up All Night, Heart of Dixie, Sex in the City 2, and After Party. Kyle is the founder and director of surrogacy at Elevate. I was lucky to see Kyle kick ass in the role of Gabe in Next to Normal back in 2010. Next to Normal was one of my favorite Broadway shows. And by random chance, back in 2016, my husband and I bumped into them on the Isle of uh, the island of Mykonos. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome them both to the locker room. Please welcome Taylor Fry and Kyle Dean Massey. Hello. Hi, gents. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? That We're was great. such a gener that was a generous introduction. Oh, uh, well, you guys are you know it's impressive what you know. You're a lot younger than me, and what you've accomplished, I think, is is you know spectacular. And no one um, would guess that. No one, everyone would think we are the same age. So, oh please, <laughs> very very nice. Wouldn't it be nice to be in Mykonos right about now? Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. We miss traveling so much. It's like fact, um, if, during COVID, we would book a trip just to book it, being like, well, maybe we'll be able to go. We we will, we, we do the whole thing. We do flights. We do the hotels. I think that it's just entertaining us and giving us hope that we will be able to go and then yeah, they get canceled. That. Yeah, it's it's been fun. Yeah. I love that. Um, take me back. How did you two meet? We met, uh, we were, it was when I was doing Next to Normal, as you mentioned earlier in oh, wow. 20, I was doing it in 09 to 11. And Taylor was doing Finian's Rainbow across the street. Hmm. And um, I think that the first time we met was at the gym between shows. So that was kind of a, uh, <laughs> it, it, that, that it's so New York because yeah. you know I, I used to belong to New York Sports Club and and yep. I'd see Broadway actors there all the time you know yeah during the day or in the morning you know um, that's so funny um, yeah. seriously Next to Normal was great uh, a friend actually had had seen it not I don't think he saw you he might have seen it with Aaron and then because he loved it so much he bought them from for myself and one of his other good friends. And, oh, nice. and that's that's how I saw it for the first time. And then I took my husband because I loved it. I, I just what a great what a great show. Yeah, it was a great show. And luckily, um, so I met Taylor. Yeah, I mean, but that's so New York too. Just you know, theaters across the street, and then you meet at the gym. Yeah. Well, that's I always say this about New York. It it has great gym culture for the gay community. I mean, it's yeah. it's really where you go to like socialize and I don't mm -hmm. know get your next date. I think it's it's got it's kind of a sexy atmosphere. Um, yeah. More so before COVID, but I still think it's great. You know, even in Los Angeles, it's not it's not quite like that. Yeah. Well, and it's especially today where so many gaming apps. I mean, it's still like that you know, in person, smile, say hello. Yeah, yeah. Give somebody Give somebody your number, which I don't think happens that frequently, especially, I mean, well now, you know, but, you know, yeah, I think true. bars have become less of a place that people meet, people have met online so much more that, you know, a gym is a, a casual and not, you know, friendly environment to, yeah, uh, yeah. To, to do that in. And you've been together, is it 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. Been married for five this year. That's awesome. Okay. I, I, I'll get to that because, uh, you know, uh, I want to talk about gay marriage because I think it's just important to talk about because we, you know, for so long, um, a lot of us never thought it would happen. But can you take me back? Who or what influenced you both on becoming actors? Taylor, you uh, want to take Yeah, sure. I... Ever since I was a little kid, you know, I see the home videos now and I just always wanted to sing and dance. My mom 
had a Whitney Houston album. I forget which one, but I just wore that thing out. I just, I love, I love music. So, and then I finally, my dad really wanted me to play football. So I played football for many, many, many years. Um, that was a, his way of like, you know, bonding because he has five other boys who really <laughs> loved playing football. Um, wow. But yeah, then I was able to finally speak my truth and say, hey, I really want to like go to that Rogers Memorial Theater is what it's called. It was in Bountiful, Utah. Is there a chance I could go audition for the play? And I got the role of Nana the dog. And I remember going <laughs> in and then giving me like a big dog zippy outfit. And I remember being like, no, thank you. I will not be the dog. I'll be Wendy, <laughs> but I'm not going to be the dog. That's fantastic. And, and <laughs> Kyle, Kyle Dean. I grew up in Arkansas, so there wasn't like really an arts culture there. But um, a guy that I went to went to my high school. It's about three years older than me, named Matt Cavanaugh. He's started a bunch of Broadway shows over the years. And when he graduated from high school, he was majoring in musical theater, like he was going to college for musicals, which I didn't know was like a thing. So it was really Matt who uh, I think I kind of credit to being like, oh yeah, this is like a thing you can do. Um, I mean, I'd never seen like a Broadway show or anything, you know, when I made this decision. So I think I, I credit Matt for that. And then I went to theater school and, you know, moved to New York. Can we also, the, the, can we thing. also, can we credit Matt for his cover of what show was that? I remember seeing around New York and I would see Urban Cowboy. Oh, Urban Cowboy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I have I to look, seeing that have to look him up. Like, I know the name that? sounds. When familiar. you see the poster, you'll remember. You'll be like, oh, right. I remember yes. that one. He was, he was, wow. Yeah, he looked great. That's Congrats, so man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's important for me. Like I said, I'm older than you guys. I'm 54. And, you know, when I was growing up, there were really no um, role models to look up to. And I think it's really incredible, how, you know, for one thing, for the gay community, um, how much it has changed. Was coming out difficult for the both of you? I mean, you definitely didn't grow up in as metropolitan a city as New York, but. Uh, I think it's hard for everybody, even when it's not. I think it's like, mm -hmm. it's it's usually hardest for yourself, I think, just kind of admitting to it, I suppose. But I, I to your point, I think the hardest part was, for me, was there weren't role models. You're right. You know, I think you, I always heard, heard stories of what gay people were and what happened to gay people and how they were treated. So I just kind of assumed, well, I guess I think I'm gay, but I must not be because I don't fall into that group. You know what I mean? So they were, they that, were scary people. They were scary people. Yeah. <laughs> they still they still are. Drag queens still scare me. No. <laughs> oh, come on. I know you watch RuPaul every Friday. I do. I love, I love, I love drag queens. I always have, always will. Um, yeah, I think that was it. I mean, you know, it was, it was, it was a long time ago for me, so... Yeah. Taylor's was important. more interesting because I think he was at BYU. So there were more implications to being gay. I don't know. Like interesting. School. Interesting might not be the right word, but it was certainly very difficult and well, you, sad you and did grow scary. up Mormon, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I grew so up Mormon. Um, which in my family is amazing people. Um, they've all had their own journey, you know, from my first telling them. Um, some of them were like, I knew that. Come on. And then others were like, <laughs> when you were singing the... Whitney. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. That's the best. Was that the I first the inclination. <laughs> yeah. I, I go see the home videos and I'm like, come on, mom. How are you, how are you going to tell me you didn't know? Like, it's pretty, <laughs> I'm like teaching my sister how to curtsy and I just, I just <laughs> the gayest from square one. But yeah. And Utah was not easy. It was a bit tricky coming out. And luckily I, had a good enough support system and enough confidence in myself to keep my head up and my chin up despite it all and kind of sort through some of the mental issues I was dealing with at the time feeling so less than. And that's the most important thing is really having um, people you can talk to, whoever you are, whether it's your family, a friend, to be able to have that support system. Support system is the word I was looking for because you just said that. But um, it, I read something, uh, Taylor, did you almost get kicked out of? Brigham? Oh yeah, they brought me into a room. It was like a witch trial. It was pretty crazy. They said they had heard rumors. I was, I had been reported for homosexual activity. Um, oh. They stated the boy that was in suspicion with me and he didn't go to the school and he really was just a friend. Like at that point I hadn't really done anything sexual with a guy. I mean, a little bit here and there, but nothing crazy. So I was truly dumbfounded because I wasn't 
out of the closet yet. And I thought that if I got kicked out of school, it would, it would out me to everybody, you know? So yeah, it was tricky. And I, I did end up finding out who it was that reported me. And, um, you know, it's taken a minute to let that go because your entire academic career, like I was doing quite well at BYU. It was a hard school to get into. I thought that, you know, I, I wasn't going to be able to attend anymore. And you're, you're sometimes they won't even transfer your credits over to a new school. It's called the honor code society at BYU and it needs to be fucking annihilated. And slowly, I think it is. Um, a lot of news outlets were covering, I think a year ago, year and a half ago, what people have gone through. I mean, it's just, it's inappropriate. Wow. I mean, for your generation, that's not something I would have thought would have been in existence. They're a little behind there. Let's put it that way. Yeah, wow. Uh, it's scary, that's but I, I do love all the light that's been shed on them. Like truly a spotlight was put on them. And um, I think things are hopefully different now. Yeah. Well, hearing people speak about it for sure always helps. Um, so, so New York, the Big Apple, what brought you both there? And uh, was it a scary move for your first time? Sure. I think anytime you kind of move someplace and you don't really know anybody, you don't have any money. That's, that's always tricky. Yeah. The money, the money's the trick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, I think if, if you want to do theater, I mean, that's the place to be. There's really no other place. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that, that's it. I mean, so if you really want to, I don't know, like play with the big dogs. I, that's a weird expression, but like, that's, it's where you got to go. So that there was never a question. I was going to go anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same with me. I was, I knew, I knew the first time I went at 17, I was like, this city is for me. I feel at home here. So I moved there as quickly as I could after the national tour of hairspray. <laughs> yeah, that, that's incredible. Um, and you left school for that, right? For the national tour? Yes. Thank goodness. Because man, I was at a rough place and that was my ticket out. It was a golden ticket out to drop out of school and move to New York and be myself and get healthy. Yeah. That's not a small role either. That's a great, you know, Great oh my gosh! To, to, to I'll tackle. never do. I'll never get to do another show as good or as fun. I mean, playing Link Larkin, it was the highlight of my life. It really is. Right? Yeah, I mean, thing. just the, you know, sort of that energy of hairspray. It, there really is when you're even sitting in in a theater watching that. You know, when that last song comes up, the entire audience is is in the aisles. What what um. Take me back to the first time you both stepped foot on a Broadway stage. Do you re remember that feeling and and which show, if you don't mind? <laughs> I do. Yeah, sure. My my Broadway debut was in Xanadu. And um, it was funny because I just remember when I was in college, I would always get all these books shipped to my school because, like, you know, the libraries never had all the audition books that I wanted. So you would, like, write to another school and they would mail it to you which seems so old fashioned, but, yeah. but there were these, um, these books and I read, you know, about people talking about their Broadway debut where they like audition on the stage and from the back of the house, they're like, you got it. And they like drop to the floor in tears and cry. And I was always expecting like that kind of <laughs> reaction for myself. Like I was like, I want this so badly. Like I'm just going to lose my mind. But the thing was like, I didn't really skip any steps, you know, like I, I did off Broadway. I did first national tours, a couple. So then, by the time I made my Broadway debut, it just seemed like a logical next step. It wasn't like, um, you know, it wasn't like this life changing moment. Mm -hmm. But um, but it was really cool because I mean, it's your one Broadway debut, and Cheyenne Jackson was in that show with me, and um, and I always just really appreciated that I was joining that show in the middle of its run. So you know, people they don't care that much with people have Broadway debuts, but he made such a big deal about it. Um, which I thought was so sweet and it made me that's feel awesome. really special. Yeah. Yeah. That that's, nice. that's really awesome. I'm really sad. I never saw that show cause I'm a big, you know, Xanadu fan Yeah, it was <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> it was cute. It was really cute. Yeah. As and fate you, would have it, Cheyenne was in my Broadway debut as well. I was covering him oh. in a show called Finian's Rainbow that lasted for about 2.5 seconds. Um, it was a great, it was a great show. It was beautiful, super well done. Doesn't but matter, to, it's still your Broadway debut. Oh my gosh, I'll never forget it. That night was such a thrill. My whole family was there. Not my whole family, I think two of my siblings and my parents were there. Um, and just getting ready and your outfit for that night. And gosh, we were, the opening night party was at Bryant Park and I drank so much champagne and i just thought i had arrived and i was like covering cheyenne who i just looked at as like god's gift to musical theater and he was so talented and beautiful and 
nice to me. And he's actually become a very dear friend of ours more in recent years. Um, as we're adult, as we're adults, I was only 20, 22 when I covered him. Um, but yeah, it's magical. Nothing will ever be like an opening night of a Broadway show and that carpet carpet goes and up. A, and, and a premiere at uh, Brian Park ain't bad. You know, oh my gosh. You know, amazing. Brian Park is a pretty spectacular place for any type of event. So yeah. What um oh I lost my question. Oh, you're Broadway idols growing up. Who were Brian, Brian Darcy James? He was my absolute Brian. total Broadway idol. Like I was obsessed with him. I had every album that he sang on. I tried to sound like him. And then <laughs> in next to normal, he played my father, actually. So I got to work with him. Oh, I didn't remember that. Uh-huh. He was amazing. And um, yeah, sometimes like there were other people obviously I looked up to growing up, like when I was studying in school and and I that I eventually worked with. And sometimes they kind of disappoint you a little bit where you're like, Oh, you're not yeah. as good as I <laughs> thought you were. But Brian was, I mean, he was he's amazing. He's legit, totally incredibly talented, super nice guy. So he didn't destroy my childhood. Yeah, that I know that that's always the worst if that happens. Yeah. And for you, Taylor, gosh, I hate to say it, but <laughs> probably Cheyenne. I just thought he was amazing, and I loved his yeah, voice. Well. I had the album from All Shook Up, and I just thought I was like, oh my gosh, this voice is is amazing. I just love the way he sounded. So I don't know. I that's that's weird, but um. I'm, that's it. Well, I'm really sad. I really wanted to see you, Taylor, in the view upstairs. I, I, I haven't seen you perform live, but th that show just seemed the the whole story behind the view upstairs is fascinating. I love doing that show. I got I lucked out. I got to play such a cool role, and I got the best songs. Um, Max Vernon composed it. He was it, those that music is he's so smart. He's such a brilliant composer, and I like my storyline. You know, prostitute with a heart of gold doesn't get better than that. <laughs> that's pretty good that's pretty good so you know we mentioned gay marriage and for me as a you know gay man i never uh allowed or believed that i would ever have the chance so for me i put pushed it out of my head until you know new york was uh making that decision you know they were in the courts deciding if i had the right to marry and it just made me so angry that somebody was deciding whether or not i could do it and i was like no one should have that right and i want to do it and I did do it in 2013. What was it for you guys? I mean, did you sort of feel that same way? Yes. Yeah. In fact, I talked about this last night uh, with Taylor. I just, I never imagined that I would be able to to be married and 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 to bring in our company really quickly for gay people to have kids. You know, that was mm -hmm. just like, it wasn't even remotely on my radar. And it wasn't like I didn't, one, I just knew that I couldn't have it. So it was just kind of like something I had accepted, honestly. I, I really had, like, I was just like, well, that's going to be my life. Um, so then when it happened, it was, it made me like really take a minute and look at the situation and be like, oh, gosh, okay, this is a thing now. Like, and then your parents are like, well, are you guys going to get married? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't, yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't think. I had a different perspective for whatever reason. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to do what I want to do. If I get married, even if it's in my front yard and no one else is there, but me and my husband right. and I call it a marriage, that's mm -hmm. I just didn't really didn't care. I mean, I wanted it to get past. And when it did, I was thrilled and, you know, it just felt that much more normal. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I've always yeah. come from the mindset that anything is, anything is possible. I don't really take no, for an answer, of course, unless it's like in an inappropriate setting, then I take no for an answer very much. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I I get that. But you know, like for me, especially, you know, again, like I grew up in a different time, and it just was something I never, you know, my my dad sadly didn't know I was gay before he passed away, and he would used to say, "Am I ever going to see uh -huh. you get married?" And I uh -huh. would say, "No, I'm gonna, you know, I'm married to my work," which was probably my, you know, hiding the, my sexuality. Sure. But in all honesty, there was nobody at that time getting married. So it was interesting. And, it, you know, we've come a long way and I think it's great. And I think it's, you know, that's why I love seeing, you know, couples like yourselves on social media, you know, because there are kids who still struggle so desperately with fitting in and, and coming to terms with it, sadly, because of um, family situations. So 
you know, we, okay. anyway, you know. So I want to talk about Elevate, but you know, what fascinates me too is as actors, you're always looking for that next job. And now you have, you know, this great company as a successful business. Does it give you both sort of the freedom if you wanted to, to do the things that you want to do acting wise? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I think you put it, you put it best, you know, when I, when I started the company years ago, I, I was kind of tired of waiting for someone else to deem me worthy enough or good enough to give me a job. You know, I worked my ass off. I auditioned all the time and I felt passionate about IVF and began it. And once it took off, I feel like a whole different human being. I mean, I'm not the same person I was when I was living in New York. This company has given me total freedom. Um, it's, it's satisfying. It's fulfilling. We feel very creative doing it. Um, but it just takes all the pressure off of when you do get an audition that seems fun or you would want that role. It's like, oh, this is now this is going to be fun again. I can go audition and enjoy this process because my my paycheck, and my rent is not you know depending on it. And it's yeah. been interesting during COVID to see so many of our dear friends do this pivot, as everybody's calling it, and develop new skills and, and new ways of getting income. And I, I think it's amazing. And I think we probably maybe all should have at some point. But when things are going so well. Well, why, why mix it up? It, it's true. But, it, you know, I was thinking about so many, because I've worked with actors all of my career and, you know, you they're waiting for the next job or they have a, a side hustle, but your side hustle is a business. You know, like yes. you two have put together an incredible, you know, business. Um, you know, I... I I know from personal experience, no, I don't have kids, but I am a gunkle, you know, <laughs> thanks to many amazing egg donors and surrogates who have helped my friends. Um, you created it because you guys were searching for an egg donor at what time. Can you tell us about the search and what the challenges you found that sort of, you know, the light bulb went off and said, hey, let's create, elevate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think we were just that. We were looking for an egg donor. The process is a little strange because you go online, you look at profiles and see how high they are and where they went to school. And then you're supposed to be like, well, this is going to be the gen genetic mother of my child. <laughs> it, it feels like such a heavy decision. And um, and it really put me off, honestly. Like, I think Taylor looked at how many thousands of profiles, Taylor? Many, many, many. Yeah. And the thing, it's not like, I believe we believe any woman that wants to donate is generous. We were just looking for something kind of specific and turns out in IVF when you can choose certain things, you know, you should be able to. So I don't know. There just came a moment after we had done our journey and made created embryos where I thought, you know what, I think I might be able to improve upon this a little bit, even just based on my inner circle who people I know who want to donate. I mean, they were some incredible options, women in my shows, you know? So it, it was kind of organic the way it grew, but I would say Kyle and I, Kyle, were you surprised at how, how it took off and or were you expecting it <laughs> i was i was surprised i i think like i i remember when uh we first started it taylor was like i'd like to do this many matches this year and end up doing like 10 times that amount or something i mean it was wow. yeah. it was it took off really quickly and i you know the reason i think well one of the reasons is there is a there was a major hole in the market as far as appealing to gay men um so many of the agencies out there were you know like branded purple and pink and full of pregnant women. And it's like definitely catering to women who have been through IVF for years. Um, and it, it felt like a very straight kind of thing. Um, there was nobody, we didn't find anybody that was like a gay run agency uh, for gay men who approach this process differently. You know, it's, we're not dealing with infertility, which is something that a lot of people deal with and it's a right. serious issue. Um, but the way that people who deal with infertility come to find donors is very different than the way that gay men do. And so I, we felt like that was being kind of ignored. There was also, there, it turns out there are some gay owned surrogacy agencies that we have come to know and, and like, um, but donor agencies, yeah, it was, it was tricky to find. Well, and it's interesting because you're right in terms of gay men, it's not an issue of our infertility and, and, and women and, and, or the straight couple definitely it affects them mentally on some level. Some some women yeah. do take it very personally that they can't do it on their own. But yeah. you know, the magic of science is such a you know brilliant thing, 
and, and what you're able to do for families, you know, I, I look at all of, you know, my, my friends who have, have done it. But one of the things I love too, is your staff are not only parents, but have been through the process. Is that correct? Yes. Um, everybody. Um, I think all seven of our employees have, have all been donors or surrogates or, um, you know, relied intended on fertility, parents. intended parents. Yeah. So I do think that kind of gives a personal connection to the process for sure. Was that a conscious decision when you set out to create? You know what? It wasn't. It just started kind of organically happening. Um, yeah. And mm -hmm. then the more roles we needed, I was like, well, let's get someone who understands this and can relate to, to our clients. And, yeah. and what was the first you know, when you said you were going to do this or you started doing research on how you could do it better, what were some of the first things, you know? I think we, we looked at our challenges we, or steps. Yeah. We, we looked at our experience because we had retained what was supposed to be the best egg donor agency in California. And I was so, and it's very expensive. You know, this process, it, it, yeah. it is not cheap. And so I just felt like, gosh, we're, we saved for a long time to be able to afford this. And our contract is like, has white out on it and is scratched through. It just felt <laughs> dated. The whole thing felt right. really dated and kind of um, confusing. It, it is confusing. There are 1 million steps going through this process. And um, I think we started just at our own experience. Like what would we want if, if we could build our own program and what would make us happy? What would make us feel joyful about the process? So that's kind of, that was our starting point. Huh. I mean, it's incredible. Were you, were you scared? Um, you know what, I, what scared me, I didn't, I didn't become scared until later in the game, I would say maybe 10 months to a year in, and I saw what was happening. And I saw the company just growing and expanding at this rapid pace. And it was so incredible. And it, every day still is an adrenaline rush. I mean, it's so cool helping people through this. But the success of the company ended up stressing me out a little. I, I remember telling Kyle, like, am I going to be able to maintain this? What, what do we do to keep this afloat? This is insane. I'm not sleeping. I'm working 24 hours a day. Yeah. Like, so that that's kind of what scared me. Um, yeah. Um, one of the first things that happened was it um, providing uh, somebody an opportunity to freeze their eggs or was it finding a surrogate? Like, do you remember what that first? The first was? thing was building a, data, a website I got on Squarespace and paid like $12. Um, and then I put out, I put out a few ads for anyone that wants to donate to a couple like Kyle and I, and I started getting these responses and I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So the, the, really the first step was building the donor database so people could sift through and find genetics that they liked, or this donor looks like that intended mother who is suffering from her infertility or that gay couple wants a rocket. There she is. You know, so <laughs> It became, it was, it, yeah, that was the first step. It was pretty exciting. I love that you just yeah. said that. <laughs> yeah. You need that, you need that as a slogan. <laughs> you want a rock cat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, had you already, cause I know you were going through the process. Had you, did you have your surrogate at that time or have you found that through your own process of doing it? Uh, yeah, we, you know, we created our embryos years ago. So it kind of the way for people who don't know that much yeah. about IVF, like the way you start, if you're a gay couple is you typically will freeze your sperm wherever you live. Um, you choose a donor and then they do an egg retrieval and they create embryos. And then those embryos can be frozen forever. Like, I mean, for, forever and ever, honestly, like there's no rush after that. And our company at that point was up and going. And became so busy and we were moving cross country back and forth. And so we put our own process on hold for quite a while. Um, but now we've, we've picked back up and, and we're good to go. <laughs> but luckily we've got, we have a lot of connections now. So I'm sure. Yeah, I right. hope. Yeah, I, I hope. I, I will say this. We found the surrogate of dreams. I mean, she awesome. is amazing. Yeah. She's so amazing. I have so much trust in her. She's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I, you're, you're taking me back to one of my best friends. They, I, I think they built like photo albums with the egg donor and the surrogate mm. and they have all of that to show, to show the girls, you know, because yeah. they know the prop, you know, they'll eventually know the whole story of, you know, oh, sure, how, yeah. how, how, how it comes, came to be. Um, yeah. And, 
And Taylor, you were accepted into Harvard Business School for you, you applied for this, right? To to learn more, to educate yourself. Yes, I did. I applied for the OPM program. I didn't think I had a shot in hell. I mean, the experience and kind of resume you have to have behind you to get in is just insane. But I thought, again, I don't know why I'm like, this. I'm like, why not try it? So I submitted all my paperwork, did the tests, did the essays, um, and even though I didn't have ten years of a successful business at a certain um, net income at that point, they still had looked at our evaluation and thought this guy is worthy of bringing into this program. So I was I really excited and I'm really excited to start. Things have been delayed substantially. So I should be starting on campus at Harvard in September. So, and you know what, I gotta be honest too. I just wanted to have it behind me because I didn't finish BYU. Mm. You know, I left and started working on Broadway and then I started doing films and I just wanted it attached to my bio as I became like this CEO founder of a company. So yeah. I guess some people That's... would fuck with me less. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think they should fuck with you less because you know, what you've accomplished is pretty great. I mean, you know, like you said, everyone's pivoting. I pivoted to this, you know, and I'm not working. I'm looking for a job and I'm hoping that this turns into something, but you know, I think my biggest, hurdle is I don't know all of those business elements. So I, you know, kudos to you, you know, you're going to, you know, to help your business by going to Harvard. I think that's so kudos, great. Kudos to you too, though, because I think one thing I've learned from Taylor is that um, fear plays a big part in people trying anything mm -hmm. new. And one of the things is you just have to start you or just try, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you, if you don't, it's, it's like a, what do they call that? Like a trope or something? Like if you don't yeah. try, you'll never succeed. But it's true. It so, is true. It is true. Just a little out. bit every day. You just sort it. You sort through it. And when you come up to the next challenge, you're like, "What are these? This is logistically and these legals seem crazy." And you, you just sort through it. it. It's so interesting. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of um, I started this with a lot of because I worked on As the World Turns and Guiding Light. So a lot of friends who I've had on this have asked me, you know, are you making money or this? And I said, you know, it, it's not, it's not anything I can make a living off of, but I'm learning a lot each day and I'm looking at it sort of, which you must have done at the beginning, sort of the field of dreams, <laughs> stupid motto, but if you build it, build it, it will, will come. come. Yeah, exactly. You, know, so I'm just, you say, you say you're not making money on it on this now, but just, just wait. Just hold yeah. I mean, I'm just, and... I, I, I'm having a great time <clears throat> having conversations because I think conversations really change our world. You know, people mm -hmm. learn, you know, somebody who's watching this might be calling you up after and you'll change their, their world. And, and, That's true, you know, yeah. just, just from a little thing, you know, that, we're, that we're doing today. So what would be the first, um, well, well, you said this earlier too, um, Elevate provides an opportunity for women who would like to freeze their eggs. So, you know, whenever they're ready to start having a family, um, is that correct? Like that's an opportunity for, you know, let's say a young, you know, person. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's something we're incredibly passionate about. We are not an egg bank, um, but I kind of out of just a personal desire want to help women and empower them to be able to take their choices back when it comes to their own fertility. Heaven forbid a woman wants to chase a career and has other dreams aside from being a mother, you know, a lot, we're finding a lot of women are very uneducated about their own fertility. And if they can take control of it and make a few choices earlier than later, they're going to be able to access, you know, that ovum later in life and fertilize them instead of finding, oh my gosh, my ovaries are, I have no follicles, I'm not producing oocytes anymore, you know? So it's been really, really cool to teach women what clinic to go to, how to save money on the medication. Um, we mostly just do that for friends because it's not, you know, part of our company. We match people who do need a donor and a surrogate. And in the same breath, I definitely want women to know how to not need a donor and a surrogate in the future. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's kind of like, it, to me, it's always been kind of like an equal rights issue as far as like assisted reproduction. I think that people who want to build their family should have that right to do it, whether they're a same-sex couple, whether they're single, whether they're older, whether they're female. And that's the thing. It's kind of like if you are female and you don't really want to start your family until after 35, good luck, you know, yeah. like you'll need it. And I think that giving people their power and those choices back is, is yeah. a right that we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good.
Incredible. What What are some of the first things if somebody comes to you um, and they wanted to be an egg donor? What, what's the process like for somebody? You know, they fill out an application. We screen it. We get a bunch of photos of them, make sure they're healthy. They have a normal BMI. They're within, you know, 20 to 30 years old. Uh, and then we get them in for what we call an ANH test, anti-malarian hormone mm -hmm. level. It's a number from a one to 11. Well, zero to 11, really. Um, as long as you're in the 2.0 range, you should be able to get approved to donate to a couple. It's usually indicative of um, egg quality and quantity. And yeah, from there, we get a lot of submissions. We get, you know, like 80 submissions a week. Um, not everybody is approved for one reason or another. Um, health histories, fan, big lines of cancer, you know, things like that. Again, when you can shoot certain things, when enlisting genetics to build a family, people want to. So it isn't always easy, but um, there are a lot of a lot of programs. Everyone's a little different. Elevate is very specific, um, but there are some other some other agencies as well. And you just recently started a sperm donor program. Ah, well, yes. Is that the same age, or does it change because of men? Yes, yeah, they can. It does change. They can <laughs> back to equal rights. They can donate <laughs> well into their years. Now, what's interesting is the conversations I'm having with my colleagues. You know. During COVID, I think we've all formed opinions about the FDA and CDC, um, mm -hmm. whether those are good or bad, whether you feel protected by them or not. But, you know, as a gay man, not to get graphic, but if you're having a certain kind of sex, technically you're not eligible to donate, uh, kind of like donating blood. So my life goal is to get this turned around. I want this mm. to change. I think this is such discrimination and uh, total bullshit. Um, well, you're telling me that blood should should have been changed years ago and and yeah. today with what's been going on with covid i mean i know so many people who tried and you yeah. know and some still can't do it it's really yeah. weird too because with with donating gay meats it's uh, you still have to undergo an fda panel so like they will still test you for a full battery of like stds and drugs and things like that so they i don't i i don't understand what the risk is it seems 100 percent discriminatory to me so right because if 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 your tests are negative there's yeah. there's no reason not to donate if you can yeah. help somebody yeah exactly but they put up these rules and regulations it's just this red tape and against gay men and i don't know I'm kind of tired of it so i will change it it's going to probably take the next five to ten years but i will do it <laughs> yeah i i i love the i will that is a great way to look at it, but but that so if you your sperm sperm donor, you have to go through the same battery of tests. I mean, not same, but a yeah, of you'll do. You fill out an application. Um, you know, we're looking for all kinds of sperm donors. So there's so many different families and different ethnicities that are looking for certain things. Um, you know, people really love height. They come to our agency being like, often the first criteria, even for egg donors. They're like, we really need a tall donor. I'm like, do you need a tall donor? You seem I heard tall. you say that in, in your lemonade stand interview. I was like, I can't believe yeah. that. But, yeah. you know, people, you know, I guess, you know, if, you know, the three of us were going out and looking for a guy, we might like a taller guy or, you know, a short guy to, you know, to date. You know, it's the same. Maybe. I mean, that's what's cool is beauty is in the eye of the beholder, you know. Yeah. But essentially, they fill out an application. We look at their health profile, uh, drug use, alcohol use sexual activity, all of those things. And it kind of bumps them to the next phase. Um, most men's sperm is, is in good condition, um, but they will do a motility and morphology test upon giving the specimen at a clinic. What does that mean? The, those two words you used, motility and? The shape and the way it moves. And yeah, yeah. it's healthy, yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, and when did you start it, the, this program? Has it, have you been getting a, a lot of folks coming? Yeah, oh, tons. No, no pun, tons. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a pun. <laughs> oh, I liked that. I think that, that was really good. <laughs> sorry, I'm um, totally blushing right now. <laughs> I thought that was genius. Um, was <laughs> you know, there wasn't like, there's sperm egg banks, you know? It's an interesting thing. Like egg donors, you see all of their photos, like 30 of them as an adult. But then sperm banks, for all these different criteria and rules, they'll give you like a few baby photos of, of a sperm donor and that's what you have to go off and choose of occasionally you can get a an adult photo but my goal is to equalize this a little and make a premium sperm donor branch where it's a much better look at who these men are and who you're choosing to uh, build a family with and, and what um prompted you two to 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 add that to elevate you know what we love sperm 
We just love sperm. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's a good answer. Uh, as no, my husband just, and I would say, we, GA. We always good answer, GA. <laughs> I just I saw that it doesn't it doesn't exist. There is not a premium egg donor or sperm donor database where you can go in and see full profiles and twenty questions the the male has to answer. And no, I just kind of want to try it all until it fails. Um, so, well, at all, I mean. Yeah you're doing or adding all of the parts that go into, you know, making a family. So yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's sounds like the perfect, you know, fit for, for what you're doing. Um, what have some of the most, I, I, I would assume seeing some of the families you've helped create, but has that been some of the most rewarding elements to this so far? 100%. We get, we get baby photos every day. From our oh. clients all over the world, they send us, you know, their newborn photos, their Christmas cards, and it's really exciting to see see them starting to grow up now too. You know, we've been doing this long enough that you know you got... need to ask. What's that? You... I said you need to ask if you can get permission, and you should build an elevate family wall on your website. It's true, it's true. Yeah, we should, we could. You know, it is a very private agency. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. That's what I mean. Like it. Yeah, you need permission. People's... No, it'd be good. You... It'd be great. It's a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, what's I mean... cool too is when the kids, the photos of the kids come in from like a cancer survivor or someone who had a hysterectomy or lost their ovaries at a young age. It's it's amazing to see them light up once that kid comes. Uh, it's really, uh... really special. And then we send them oftentimes to the donor too, the photos, because the donors love seeing them too. With permission. Yeah. Do, yeah. Right. Do, do most... Um... Or is it, it, it's everyone's personal um, feeling on the subject, but do a lot of them stay in contact? I would say most are probably anonymous. Um, okay. Mo most are anonymous, but um, they're, you know, you can be anonymous, you can be known, or you can kind of be something we call semi-known. So um, there are different Do you know options. what you guys will do? We know yeah. our donor. We yeah, know our donor. We know her. It's, We're, it's, but will, do you think you're kid or kids will would you that's up to her you know yeah. that for, for us gotcha. that's that's her decision if she wants to kind of be involved or get photo updates that's completely her prerogative we are yeah. here to do what makes her feel comfortable and, and you're both moving forward now because i know you said you put it on hold we are we're getting somewhere man we're not <laughs> there yet but we are getting close very close well well yours definitely can be on the baby wall <laughs> That's true. That's if, awesome. if, if the kid's cute, we'll see. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, congratulations. I really do think, I mean, it's amazing that you have this, you know, I mean, really you're following, you know, your dreams on both ends. So, you know, kudos to that. Now I want to go back to acting, if you don't mind for a little while. Um, Kyle, um, next to normal, I, you know, like I said, I loved what was the experience like playing? I mean, first of all, the music of the show. You so know. good. Yeah. It was great. You know, it was really cool. And I, I did it for the majority of the run. So I got to do it with two different actresses, playing my mother, um, Maren Maisie, the late, the late great Maren Maisie. Oh, uh, yeah. I and, think I saw uh, it with both. Yeah, and Alice Ripley, and they were so yeah. different. And so it was really amazing to get the experience of doing it with both of them because they were so completely different. And then aside from that, like, I, you know, it's weird. Uh, somebody asked me recently on like a Q&A thing I did. They were like, do Broadway shows, like, are you guys like all best friends? You guys hang out after the shows? And they were like, no, not <laughs> at all. Like, never. But that show, pretty much everybody that was involved in that show, I've remained really close with. We've kept in great contact. I think that show was really special in that regard. You know, we we felt like family doing the show. And we kind of remained that way. I, I don't know her name off the top of my head. It's somewhere back there. But the woman who played your sister, um, Jen Damiano, she was or in something maybe. else. I saw. Maybe. I think Jen, Jen Jen was in something else. I feel like I saw in the last few years, oh. and I can't recall oh. what that was because I remember her name. That that's what I was trying trying to think. Um, Taylor, what was uh, doing it too like? It was it was cool. I mean, it was I've never had the chance to be a part of a Hollywood blockbuster before. You know, my role was was pretty short. I just had the first I think eight minutes of, of the movie, but um, 
man, that premiere was. But that's eight was, minutes. It was cool. <laughs> it, listen, I'll, I'll never. Oh, I think did my earphones go out? No, no, we okay. can hear you. Um, I mean, you walk into the theater right smack dab in Westwood, um, where so many premieres are, and I got to do the whole carpet, and I'm like there with Jessica Chastain, and she has no idea who I am. Um, but yeah, it was it was a pretty pretty cool experience to be a part of something that felt so so grand that involves so much money. Um, mm -hmm. It was cool. Well, you know, I, I do a lot of research as I prepare for these, and I went down the YouTube rabbit hole. I'm listening to lots of music from from Kyle more than I could find from Taylor. But A, you two need to record together. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> okay. You guys are fantastic. I mean, the m music is great. You really we'll should. We'll do a little uh, lullaby nursery album. Oh, our, our there you go. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Well, and you can sell it through Elevate. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's funny. I, I used to love singing. Like back when I was doing Broadway shows, I loved it and I felt good at it. And I don't know what happened, but somewhere through the mud at Telsey auditioning all the time, I just start stopped. I just started getting mm. freaked out about singing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't Does really it make you that. nervous, like audition wise? Oh my gosh, yes, I hated it. But that's what's so annoying is I used to be so confident about it. And then I left my phone in a room once after an audition at, Te at Telsey. That's their name, right? And I was working with Matt Farnsworth and like I was recording my auditions. I'd put it down on the floor and record the voice memo so I could go back and work with him on like what happened in the room because I would sound great. And then in the room, my nerves get the best of me. I wouldn't breathe, blah, blah, blah. Well, this audition went terribly. So I exited as fast as I could, grabbed my music, but I forgot my phone in the room and it was left on record. And I remember being like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to go back in there and get it. And I knocked on the door and I opened it just to hurry and get it. And I remember the whole table, I know each and every face. And they were like, almost as if I had heard them. And I was like, I'm sorry, I just need to get my phone. I left it. So it took halfway the sub on the subway ride home back to Queens oh to realize, God. oh my gosh, <laughs> what they said is on that voice memo. And I'll never forget being like, holy shit, I know that didn't go well. Do I want to do this to myself? And sure enough, I did. And I listened to yeah. it. And it was it was ruthless. It was it was terrible. Oh. And this is a casting director who still is very much in the game. And I just could not believe the thing she was saying. I would have never imagined that, you know, it was just an audition. I mean, I just it was just a song, you know. <laughs> Like, why was she so worked up and angry about what I had just done? And she just came hard and I'll never, ever forget it. Oh, uh, that's really unfortunate. And people are, some people just don't know when to keep their mouths shut. Sure. Yeah. I will but say you know this, what? Though. It's, uh, what? I was going to say, you can hear Taylor singing on the View Upstairs has an amazing cast album. Oh, I, and I will. I will download that it, today. It's really great like i actually listen to it a lot i know I, I would i listen to next to normal but sadly i wish I, you know i'm not getting you <laughs> oh yeah i'm not on that yeah, yeah. i'm not Taylor's getting you on that recording so oh i i, I will uh, you can say he doesn't like singing all day but he sounds great on it <laughs> well that's oh. that Taylor. you but that's an yeah. unfortunate and that that would just suck for anybody i mean it's just I shouldn't have listened to it, but yeah. I, well, we're all know. gluttons for punishment. We really, <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh, it's there. What do I do? What yeah. do I do? Um, yeah. What do you have a favorite role that you've each performed so far? Um, you know, not really. I've liked them all for different reasons. You know, I've been lucky that I've done pretty long runs. Every show I've done, I've done for probably about a year at least, and then something like Fierro and Wicked, I've did on and off for like 13 years. So you kind wow. of get to know the characters really well and you like them for different reasons, you know? So it's hard to, I always love doing Wicked just because I had such a long history there. I love my dresser at the Gershwin, uh, the stage manager, like all the backstage people, because the cast changes, you know? But right. those people always stay the same. So it's nice to see them. And Oh, and those poor people are out of work, which is really oh, awful. Um, but that's another show really like Hairspray to me. I mean, I just love, you know, the, the the way you walk out of Hairspray, the way you walk out of Wicked is you just are smiling from yeah. ear to ear. That's so great. And and you, Taylor, do you have a favorite? 
I've, I think I mentioned it earlier. I love Twain Lane Clarkin. I mean, his costume. Oh, yeah, you said, yeah. And you I said there would be nothing. Music. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, I would sit back when the curtain would fly up. Um, I would. I was in the wings for Good Morning Baltimore, and I never missed it. I would always do my hair, which took forever, and get completely ready and just sit in the wings for the dun, 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 shh, dun, dun. And there was not a single time that wasn't hyped to do there wasn't a single time that I wasn't hyped to do that show, which I can't say for, you know, many of the others I've, I've done. So. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, it's interesting. Like just the beat of something gets you, you know, puts that smile on your face. Is there a role you both, you know, that you've always wanted to play? Yeah. I always, wanted to, I always wanted to play Bobby and company. <laughs> so, but, um, well, I got to see you perform in, <laughs> I think we were in Nebraska. Was that Nebraska? Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, that was like my last business trip, January, yeah. I think, of last year. Yeah, um, at the bus convention or whatever that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, American Bus Association. Yes, you're right. <laughs> that was always one of my favorite shows. I always wanted to play that role, but I think I, I think I missed my my shot for that one. <laughs> Is it? Are they planning it to come back, or they? Oh, don't I think know? so. I think so. I don't know, but I mean, you know, that was the role that I I always thought like, oh, I'd be. I'd be good at that role, I think. But then they would flip be good all the genders it. of everybody. Yeah, I, and I've never, I've never seen the show, so I was really looking forward to. That. Oh, you haven't? It's a great show. Yeah, it was good. This, this was really good. It was in such a beautiful vision. I'm sad. So much. I mean, it, it is heartbreaking, isn't it? Yep. Oh Just yeah. All of live theater. Seeing Broadway, was... like I see the people uh, post the photos, you know, like a 45th Street with just all the lights off, and it's. It's sad. It's sad. It's yeah, just it's like, interesting. You know, you guys are now out west, but I mean, I, I've worked in New York City since 1986. I was a sophomore in college, and I'd commute in. It's really the longest period of time I haven't stepped foot on that island. Really? Wow. Yeah, it's just bizarre to me. Um, I, Taylor, I have to. Uh, sorry, Kyle. I wanted to ask because Nashville was one of my favorite shows. Did you have oh, yeah. fun doing that? So much fun. It was great. I mean, we actually shot it in Nashville. So like I would go down to Nashville for weeks, weeks and weeks at a time. It was great. I loved it. It was a great, I mean, you know, the show was pretty show. soapy, but like I loved all the music on it. And um, yeah, you, know, you, you guys it. did something on the, at, at one of your shows. Cause I think I watched you oh, and Taylor, yeah. right. You sang something. Yeah. I sang something from Nashville a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, that's right. But um, yeah, I know the cast was great. It was, it was really fun. Hmm. And um, Taylor, I don't know, and I hope this isn't an insulting thing, but I was, I, like I said, I was on YouTube and I saw um, a clip from GBF and you, in that clip, you looked just like Ben Affleck to me. Have you gotten yeah. that before? I get it all the time. I really do. I, especially, I was like, wow. Especially I, as he and I both have picked up substantially on our drinking, we're, we're becoming like twins. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all done that during this? Uh -huh. Yeah. So he's, yeah, he's, um, I get that. I do get that a lot. And I think it's complimented. It's super cute. Yeah. I, I mean, I just, you know, I know sometimes when you say something about, I mean, that I, film seemed to be on YouTube, the whole film. So I have to check that out. It looked fun. Oh, it's, it's so fun. cute. It's yeah. It looked a, like a total cute. Yeah, it is. It's a really cute movie. I had a, I had a, a great time doing it. Yeah. That's great. The, the the clip that they had, the short clip was in the car with the the guy where you, you make the pass at him. Yeah, Greg's right. crotch. <laughs> no, I mean, I was. I remember rehearsing with Michael Willett, being like, you know, how how are we going to do this? Is this okay? And he was super cool. He's like, oh yeah, just do whatever. And I was like, okay, want to make sure everyone's comfortable because my character is such a predator, which is a little scary. Um, but no, he was great. Everyone was great. I had the. It was so fun. That's so funny. I, I've asked everybody on the show, what is there something you've learned about yourself during the pandemic that you would say you didn't know before it started? Oh, gosh. Taylor? Oh, my mm. gosh. That's so... I mean, you can't just put that one on us. I, I like to drink. <laughs> I will um, say, you know what? we? I didn't realize just how much Taylor and I love like going to a restaurant, like something pretty mm -hmm. simple like that. You know, yeah. when, when California was just on total lockdown and we were like, what are we going to make for dinner tonight? Again, yeah. like yeah. after the fourth month of that, we were like, Oh my gosh, if 
if any restaurant would open <laughs> up right now, wouldn't that just be the best thing ever? Yeah, I guess I think I learned that I like people more than I, I realized. Um, <laughs> you know, on, online, a lot of people, even if you're not a star on, in New York and on Broadway, I mean, it's a pretty, can be a pretty vicious community. And I felt turned off to people for, for a long time. And it would kind of just be me and Kyle and like a small group of friends that I trusted and held beer just over the last few years. Um, and I think what I realized during COVID is, you know, obviously you let things go and you move on, but I just miss people. I just miss being around people and I miss having a group and a party. And I miss, um, a hug, you know, big hugs hug, with your friend. You know, that humans are great and they, they love you and support you. And so it's been interesting. Yeah, it's true. Uh, one of our viewers just said, uh, Kyle, that they saw you uh, do Pippin in Rochester and they loved it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that was the last city I did it in. They had brought me out to do the tour. And, um, and that was my very last, my very last show of that. And, and then he I, was, he was so good in Pippin. I, I think Pippin is the best show I have seen on Broadway in many, many years. Taylor, yeah, you I didn't that see one. that either. Oh, I've it heard so Pippin is such a great show. The way they yeah. did it was just so heartwarming and sexy and connected. And I just thought it was amazing. Huh. That was good. That was a hard show. It, it's um, a lot of athletics, right? Sort of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was physically, physically and like vocally difficult. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. And, and your first um, national tour was 42nd street, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. That was the first uh in high school we you know had our theater trip to see 42nd street on oh Broadway. really yeah that show cool. i've always loved that show it's so old old school old campy, school. cheesy but i was always a good tap dancer and that was like my first like real job out of college so i just thought it was the best thing that had ever happened to me it was great <laughs> loved it <laughs> um are you tv people do you watch a lot of tv we have been. I think during COVID, we've picked up on more things than usual. We just finished The Undoing. That was great. Yeah. Wasn't that great? Yeah. yeah Disappointing ending. I didn't think the ending was great. I thought I didn't think it should have been, you know, I guess I won't spoil this for anyone. As, as dramatic as it was quite a dramatic ending for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, if you like comedy, Ted Lasso on Apple, if you haven't seen it, is a great comedy oh. with Jason Sudeikis. People have been talking about it for a long time. Really heartwarming show. Cool. Heartwarming show. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to take one more picture because I think one of our eyes were closed. Oh, <laughs> it's probably mine. <laughs> uh, are you one of those? I'm a squinty eye, yeah. <laughs> Smile, one, two, three. Thank you both so much. It means so much to me that you did this. Everybody, elevatebaby.com. If you have any questions, they can contact the agency, right? You have a contact form on the mm -hmm. website. Yes. Yeah. Stay yeah. safe, stay healthy. Thank you. And you I really too. appreciate you uh, taking the time today. Thanks for having us. Great chatting with and, you. and good luck with uh, your baby. Oh, thank yeah. you. We'll thank you. I, can't, I can't wait to see, <laughs> see pictures. So uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for Bye, much. gentlemen. All right. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in today, everybody. Have a great afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow.